Hello everybody, it is Ed, and today we are going to be reviewing this absolute tome of a book, Words of Radiance. Now this is the second book in the Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson, if you did not know, and this is the second largest book in the entire series. Now, if you didn't know, the first book is very, very long, at about a thousand pages in hardcover. This one's about a thousand one hundred pages in hardcover, and then Oathbringer is about a thousand two hundred pages in hardcover. So it is an extremely large book. And I can't carry this in the entire time, so I'm just gonna put it up for a second. What do you guys think of Baby Sauron over there and Baby Frodo and Baby... I think that's Mary. Uh, yeah, but uh, <laughs> now I'm gonna go ahead and actually review the book with this tiny thing. So this is a great book to start it off. The most important thing about this book, in my opinion, is the scale and the scope. When you read other fantasy novels, for example, uh, King Killer Chronicles, it's got a great world, but it doesn't really world build the plants and the animal and stuff as much as this. This is kind of the king of different world building, you know? Even in Lord of the Rings, they don't really, he doesn't really world build different animals and different you know, trees and stuff. He world builds the people, and that is just an incredible job. And whereas in this book, he actually does all of that. He just doesn't do it to the extent of Tolkien, of course, but he does do all of that. The first novel in the series, uh, Way of Kings. Now, the thing about that is that I rated it a 5 out of 5 perfectly. And now I'm kind of regretting that because I had, I enjoyed it quite a bit, but there was one massive problem with it that I feel like I didn't address properly, which was the fact that there was really no, you know, end goal to the book. And in every single book, I feel like there needs to be an end goal. And in that book, you know, we were doing a story about Kaladin and Kaladin throughout most of the story had no end goal. He was just trying to survive, just trying to be decent. And you know, in every single book I can think of, there is an end goal. Bro, why'd you fall? Just to put some, you know, references in. Uh, in Misery, you know, the guy is trying, Paul, I think his name was, was trying to live the entire time, whereas his life wasn't direct. Like, he, he definitely could have died then, and that is his goal. In Way of Kings, Kaladin was not likely to die, and so that's kind of, well, he wasn't not likely, but he that wasn't generally expected of him. He wasn't expected to die. And so that's kind of, you know, in that book really had a problem with goals. Dalinar had a, some decent goals, uh, Shallan had the best goal. I think she was the most interesting character in that book. This one, that changes quite a bit. Now Kaladin does have a little bit of a goal, and that changes things drastically because now I enjoy this book significantly more. Uh, he has a lot of smaller side quests to go into, and that makes his character that much more interesting. Dalinar as well, he has a much more refined and interesting and actually set goal. Before he was kind of just wondering about that goal, now he's actually trying to go towards that goal. And Shallan, now she has a decent goal as well. People I don't think like Shallan that much, but I think she's one of the most interesting characters in the entire series. She actually has a goal, and that's what makes this one so important. Because in this story, Shallan, the main character now, has a goal, and that is what makes this so interesting. If I could go back in time and review the other one again, I would give it a 4 out of 5 for not having Kaladin's goal. It's a decent book, don't get me wrong, but it has some problems with goals and end goals. And motivations, really, character motivations. In this one, we have a lot of that built back up. It does have a couple of the same problems, but it's a pro the, but the extent of those problems are very much less than before. I think Shalon's backstory in this was one of the better backstories. Kalan's backstory was fairly boring until the very end, and that was really annoying me because he doesn't do much, you know? It's just his family going through struggles, and I feel like that's not really a big problem, really, in, in the scope of what we're reading about in this entire novel. But it was really kind of boring me because Kalan's an interesting character character, don't get me wrong, but he's interesting for different reasons than motivations. And now, we've got this guy who we really need to like sum up his motivations, but all we're doing with the backstory is kind of we're talking about his family. And that ended up being kind of boring. By the end, we did have part of his motivation, which was really, really fun, and I enjoyed the end of that. But in this story, Shalon has a very interesting motivation repeatedly shown throughout the entire story. And about the end of her, uh, of her backstory, we do not lose that motivation. We do not get a better motivation, but the motivation changes. We learn something new about the motivation, which is what I really think is great about this book. I think you're gonna like this book if you are already part of the Stormlight Archive. You know, if you, if you love that kind of stuff, this really world builds even more, and I really enjoy that about this. It really goes farther than that. Uh, it has some great, great connections to, you know, Lord of the Rings, and because of that kind of stuff. Uh, but again, it's a very interesting story, not just because of the 
you know, for flora and fauna, about all that stuff that he's world built. It's a very interesting story because of the plot. It's a very interesting plot that really comes into light in this book. Kaladin's book, In the Way of Kings, that is not even shown. You know, we, we kind of have inklings of it, but that's again another thing that lacks. There's no feeling of any kind of end goal. You know, oftentimes in a book, you kind of have, in the first part of it, you have an end goal that's very, very different uh, and just altered drastically by the time you actually enter into the main plot. Sure, but there's no even, like, there's not even a beginning plot in the first book, and that's, that's what really annoyed me. Here we actually jump into the main plot, and getting into the end of this book, we have made drastic strides towards the actual end of the entire series. We've made drastic plot, we, we know, like from the beginning of the series to the end, I could list like 50 different things that have changed drastically, not just some small like, oh now Shalon is a nicer person, no. Like we can name actually big things that happened and so, the plot in this book progresses incredibly. As well as the fact that the plot actually exists in this book. We get a lot of the characters coming back like Seth, and uh, we get a new character called Ashonai, which is really prominent in this story. Now there's still a lot of mysteries at the end, but I think that Sanderson concludes this series book really really well, having a lot of past different things going on, for example Seth, come back into the story and have great big moments in the story, and when it comes out of it, he just gets the introduction of new plots that will be continuing into the next book. So that's kind of where I really stand on this book. It's a very, very drastically better than the first book. That's, that's all I'm going to say, and people generally disagree with me. I know that, but I'm going to stand by that. One thing that I find is lacking in Sanderson's writing as a whole. Um, you know, I, I really enjoy his plots, I really enjoy the work he puts in, and I really enjoy the world building, everything like that, I really enjoy. But there's one thing about this that I really don't like, it's the writing. People cite Sanderson for being a very simplistic writer, and I think that there's nothing wrong with that. It's a very good thing, or a very good skill to have, to write simplistically, and that works very decently in telling a story. But the problem is that this simplicity of words is held too much. I feel like these stories don't have enough heart, and that's such a dumb way of saying, you know, something I can't really understand, but, you know, if I read a King story, his language is very simplistic, but it's written in a way that would really feel like it has heart, has really strong emotion throughout the entire thing, not just like an emotion like, oh my god, I'm crying now, but it's an em emotion in terms of emotional attachment, and this I barely have any emotional attachment to the story. It's a great story, but I don't have any emotions linking me to this. There were some great, fun, emotional moments, but the entire story lacked that emotional heart that I'm so used to reading. And because of that, I feel like Sanderson is the equivalent of fantasy pulp. And uh, you know, people are gonna hate me for that, for sure. And I don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with that, and I really enjoy that. But it, it really lacks compared to things like King Killer, Lord of the Rings, uh, you know, literally every other fantasy that I've read, it, it lacks heart. Even, even one of my least favorite series, The Dark Tower, that has heart. Even though I don't like the story, I feel like it has a heart to it. It has, I have an emotional attachment to what's going on. Not this one. This one feels like there's, the, the writing itself is so simplistic, so far away from me, that I just can't, you know, I can't relate with it. Not relate, really, but I can't see myself being in the book as much. It, it's like watching it. Like a, you know, like a, like a fantasy movie, like watching some kind of next superhero movie, you know? It's hard for me to put myself in there. It doesn't have the emotional heart that I think a lot of other books do. And that's kind of where I'm going to put the main criticism in. Uh, it really, it really picks up on a lot of goals, definitely. It really picks up on a lot of the characters and it has a great plot progression. But the writing itself, once again, lacks very much. It lacks a heart, and that's kind of where I feel bad for it, really. The characters introduced in this, by the way, are also really fun. Every single character I had a great time with, and I'm very happy about all the interludes and all of that. They, they've just been nothing but fun. Eshonai really kind of annoyed me because it's just, you know, you know what she is. You know, she kind of like set far, too far apart from the rest of the group. She had a goal, but it was, she was so different. It kind of pulled me out of the story a little bit. But it's okay. I think I'll definitely get used to her. Uh, overall, this book, I, I have to say, significantly better than The Way of Kings. And I think that, you know, despite the writing, if I'm here for a book, I have a great book. 
I just don't have a great emotional connection to it. And because of that, I am going to give it another 5 out of 5. I do wish I could change the other one to 4 out of 5. I will be changing that on my Goodreads, so, you know, uh, but I, I can't change the video, obviously. So, definitely know that for the future. And uh, I am going to be reading Edge Dancer next. I'm actually currently reading Edge Dancer. And then I'm going to go ahead and read Oathbringer. So, I do have, you know, a couple of books ready for me to go. And the Oathbringer is obviously... It is not going to be, I don't know if it's going to be the longest book I've ever read because, you know, the stand is up there, but I've read that. I don't know if it's longer than the stand, but it's roughly the same size as the stand. These things take me two months to read. This took me two months to read. So you probably are not, I'm going to be missing a couple of videos for that. Uh, so sorry about that, but I do have a couple Marvel videos coming out as well. So get ready for that. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, please slap a like on that like button down below and subscribe for the future reviews of Samson books. Definitely soon. I'm going to be getting back into Mistborn. I'm going to be, I have read The Emperor's Soul, but I'm going to review those all together in the Arcanum Unbounded uh, review whenever I get to that. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, all this kind of stuff is going on. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys are going to subscribe because I've got a lot of fantasy going on. I'm, I'm, I'm going to review some Stephen King books as soon as I finish the Stormlight Archive. So get ready for that. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. So I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.